The second group of theories, the psychological theories that are classified, are cognitive theories. Cognitive, the word comes from cognition, which is thinking. The ability to think, and different individuals think differently. In different life stages, people think differently. A child won't think like an adult, and an adult won't think like an aged individual. And so thinking over time changes. And a lot of cognitive scientists have given theories of cognition that help one understand how individuals are thinking and what level of thinking an individual is capable of. These theories focus information processing in relation to the total environment. People receive information from multiple sources today. Of course, the most basic sources are our five senses. We get information through the five senses, but today in the digital world, we also are bombarded with information from the digital world, especially today with all the gadgets that we have, the computer, the laptop, the iPad, the iPod, the smartphone, and myriads of other gadgets that keep bombarding through all the applications that are available, keep bombarding us with information. How do we take all that information? What do we do with all that information? How much information fluency is one individual supposed to indulge in before all this information or whatever part of all this information that the individual needs is perceived as actual need and assimilated. So taking all this information from the environment today is critical and it is important to help young people understand how they can look through all that information, surf through all that information, keep what they need and discard what they don't need. Because if we kept all the information that keeps hitting us every day, we will be overworked, we will be tired, we will not have space to save, store all this information and we will not be able to retrieve the necessary pieces of the information when we need them. These studies also involve developmental stages, understanding multiple forms of intelligence, problem solving, critical thinking and creativity. Developmental stages are important. Children develop based on nature and nurture. So what they have inherited and what they are exposed to in their environments, initially at home, their immediate community and society, and finally even at schools and classrooms and friends. So developmental stages are important and it is important to understand, is the child ready? If the child is not ready, there is no sense teaching the child whatever we plan to teach. So developmental stages help teachers understand, is the child ready, where the child is, is the child capable of handling certain information? For example, we would not be teaching Shakespeare in class 1, 2, or 3. You just wouldn't do it because it is not at the developmentally appropriate level for those students. Similarly, you would not be teaching counting in grade 6. It would have been happened long time ago. It would be too boring for students. So whether work is easier than at the appropriate developmental level or whether it is harder than the appropriate developmental level, both will prevent students from learning. So for teachers, it is important and critical to understand that work for students must happen at the developmentally appropriate level. Understanding multiple forms of intelligence. Today, we know that people have at least eight different types of intelligences. We all have it. We use some of those eight intelligences better than others do. And so, are we working with students in their predominant intelligence form? If we are not, we are not serving students well. 
So looking at multiple intelligences also and why different individuals would look at a similar problem differently, work and solve it, get the correct response and answer, working in their own intelligence mode. Then, of course, there is problem solving, critical thinking, and creative thinking. All this wonderful thinking should happen in every young child's mind. The problem is, in our classrooms, are we providing students with the opportunities to use their minds to problem solve, to think critically, and to think creatively? Do we expect that they can do it? We should, because what classroom life shows is our students can do it.